These are the scientists who've given the UK a crucial edge during the pandemic. And these are the devices they use to sequence the genetic code of millions of our COVID test swabs. Now they want to take what they learn from COVID and apply it to other dangerous respiratory viruses like flu, which are now putting so much pressure on the NHS. We have very limited understanding about the transmission of, of these viruses, about their long-term evolution, about you know, how do, they, do we see waves in the same way as we do uh, with, with coronaviruses. So by understanding more about their biology, we hope that we can help other scientists develop vaccines, develop new treatments, but also think about how we can intervene to prevent their spread. The project doesn't start in the lab, but in three refrigerated shipping containers in the car park. It's really cold in here, minus 20 degrees, but that's crucial to keep what they're storing fresh. These boxes contain millions of samples left over from the COVID testing campaign, but they're still a really valuable resource because of all the other viruses they might contain. The plan is to design a test to detect all the other respiratory viruses people were carrying when they were swabbed for COVID and use that to create a new surveillance programme for more routine infections. It's something that could take huge pressure off the health service. It was COVID that I think made everybody sit up and realise that actually the methodology that we've got for conventional diagnosis, conventional surveillance in the big infectious diseases is probably been now surpassed by our ability to do things with genomics. But, says Professor Bell, the NHS's ability to innovate and adapt could be held back by the pressure it's under. It's really difficult to sit up and say, oh, gosh, this is a new way of doing things, why don't we do it that way, when you're really uh, under so much pressure in the clinic, in the primary care facilities, in the hospitals. Covid may have taught us how new technology can support public health, but it also revealed how vulnerable our health systems can be, and there's no quick fix for that. Tom Clark, Sky News.